In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use Adobe Lightroom Classic to fix the color and tone of this photo. And then we're gonna jump into Denoise AI to get rid of the luminance noise that you'll see in a minute. We'll also have some bonus time in Sharpen AI because I wanna bring out even more detail in this elk. Now, before we start editing, let's just take a look at the metadata of the photo. I used my Sony A9 with the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter F45 to 5.6 GM lens. I also paired it with the two time teleconverter to double my maximum focal reach. And I really had to do that because I took this photo at Grand Teton National Park and it's really a big no no to get close to these animals. One, it could be dangerous, and two, you don't want to encroach on their space. So that's my little public service announcement. If you're out shooting wildlife, be very respectful of these animals, especially if you're in a national park. As far as the exposure details, this was shot at f11 at 1 1 25th of a second and at ISO 8000. And I jacked up this ISO because in order for me to get a deep enough depth of field, as well as the shutter speed that was fast enough to freeze the motion of the elk, that high ISO was needed. And even with that, as you can see, it is kind of underexposed. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to turn off the metadata display and I'm going to look at the histogram over here in the top right. And as you can see right away, there's a lot of room here to wrangle out some of that tone. My white point is over here, almost towards the highlight section. And I want to bring that out closer towards the edge. So that's one of the first things I'll do is I'll bring that white point out. And then I'll start increasing the exposure just a little bit. I'll open up the highlights and I'll open up the shadows just a little bit here. And instead of using the contrast slider, I prefer applying a very slight S curve using the tone curve over here. So I'm going to drop a dot here and bring the highlights up a little bit. I'm going to drop a dot here in the shadows and add that contrast. And then I'll open up the midtones by putting a dot in the middle. And you can see here, if I disable the tone curve, you see how we added contrast? You just get a little bit more fine-tuned control when you use a histogram instead of just using that contrast slider. Now, as far as cosmetics go, if I zoom in over here on the elk, I don't like this little distracting element here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It could be some leaves. So what I'm gonna do is go to the spot healing brush and I'm gonna just draw here and make a selection here as well. And if I press the H key, I can hide those points and I can see the image. And so that looks fine to me. I'll close the spot healing brush and zoom back out. And to me, it looks a lot better. It's just a lot cleaner not to have that distraction on the elk's face. The other thing that I wanna do is get a custom white balance. And because I always shoot in raw, I'm able to do that very easily. You can see I've got the raw presets here for my camera for white balance, but I'm just gonna select the dropper here. This is not a scientific method by any means, but I know that if I hover over here uh, on the antler, you can see that it, it is a neutral gray. And so I'll go ahead and click on that. And you should notice it was very minor, but the image kind of warmed up a little bit and it got rid of uh, that slight color cast that was veering it towards the cooler side of the temperature slider. And so let me just undo that just so you can see here. You see how the shadows look a little bluer and when we reapply, um, it gets just a little bit warmer. And then I'll increase the vibrant slider just a bit to bring out a little bit more of a pop in the colors, especially in the trees in the background. And so just to show you in just a minute or two, this was our original photo. You can see how underexposed it was, uh, just kind of dark. And then we were able to get uh, some nice exposure and color in the photo. But here's the problem. Let's zoom in here. You see how this photo is riddled with luminance noise? That's because I shot this photo at ISO 8000 towards the end of the day when a lot of the available light was gone. This is just the nature of the beast. This is what happens when you're photographing in low light conditions and you increase the ISO of your camera. And fortunately, we're mostly dealing with luminance noise. There really isn't any color noise to deal with. So I'm not worried about that. And there's a really easy way to get rid of noise. And that's by using Topaz Denoise AI. And so to send this photo to Denoise AI, I'll right click, go to edit in and select Topaz Denoise AI. 
I'm gonna work with JPEG for the purposes of this video over here. And I'll keep the resolution 72 because I'm not really planning on printing it, so I don't need any higher of a resolution. And when I'm ready, I'll click edit to send it over. Now that we're in Denoise AI, the very first thing I like to do is compare the multiple AI models at once, just so I can see which one works best. Easiest way to do that is to go to the view dropdown and select the comparison view. And then I'll go ahead and change my zoom to 200% and put the focus box right here, just so that we can see the elk's head. Now between these three, I like low light the best. I think it does the best job, but I do know that there's a fourth AI model called severe noise. And so I don't need to see clear. It doesn't do a very good job in this situation. So I'll select this quadrant and you'll know that it's selected because it turns blue. And then I'll select the severe noise AI model. And between those three, the severe noise model works the best. So I'm gonna double click on that to open it up in the single view. And if I press and hold, you can see here's the original photo with all that really distracting luminance noise. When I let go, this is the version that has no noise. Pretty much all of it's been removed and a lot of that distraction is now gone. I noticed that I didn't do anything with the sliders. All I ensured was that the auto toggle was enabled and that tells Denoise AI to analyze the photo and choose the best settings. And, and really it works great for me. Everything looks good. And so now that I'm ready to go back to Lightroom, I'll just click on apply. And now that we're back in Lightroom, you can see here is my original photo. And then this is the version that was just edited in Denoise AI. I'll press C to go into compare view. And then let's go ahead and zoom in. And so you can see here, this is the original, as you can guess with all that noise. And then this is our version with all that noise removed from Denoise AI. But I do want to add some more sharpness. I feel like we can add even more sharpness to the elk to really make it pop. And so what I'll do is go back to the grid view. I'll select the version of the photo that we sent to Denoise AI, and I'll right click, go to edit in and select sharpen AI. Just like before, I'm gonna use JPEG as my file format, and I'll click edit to send it to sharpen AI. And just like in Denoise AI, the first thing that I wanna do is compare the AI models that I have access to. So I'm gonna change my view to comparison view. We'll zoom to 200% just like before, and we'll put the focus box on the elk. And between the three AI models, I like too soft the best, but I'm gonna choose these other modes here to see how they perform. So let's click on very noisy and very blurry. And I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna double click to open it up in single view, and then let's zoom to fit so that we can see the entire image. Now overall, I think the elk looks a lot sharper and we'll zoom in in a minute again, but I don't like the way the surrounding grass over here and the trees got over sharpened. Fortunately, there's an easy way to control where you want the sharpening applied and that's by using the in-app masking, which is located right here, this icon that I'm gonna click. And I'll go ahead and zoom in to 100% to get a closer view of the elk. And then with the add brush selected and the edge wear option enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and start masking in the elk. First, I'm gonna adjust my feather just to make it a little smaller and increase my brush size for this part of the selection. And now with the main body of the elk selected, I'm gonna go ahead and make the selection on the antlers. And now that we have our mask completed, I'm gonna click on the apply mask button to commit that change. And if I press and hold, you can see that the elk has no sharpening applied, but when I let go, only the elk has the sharpening applied to it. So it is really nice and crisp. Now that I'm done, I'll click on apply to return back to Lightroom again. And once again, here's our original photo. This was the photo we sent to Denoise AI. And this is the photo that we sent to Sharpen AI afterwards. Now, if I go ahead and select the Denoise AI version and the Sharpen AI version, and then click on C to compare, let's zoom in over here. You can see how much more detail has been recovered from the elk and it just pops even more. And then if we go to grid view again, let's select the original photo and the version with Sharpen AI and compare the two. Let's zoom in here. And the difference is just staggering. All the noise is gone, but we still have all of the important details on the elk. And so I hope this gives you a better idea of how you can use Denoise AI as part of your image editing workflow to get rid of any of that unwanted luminance or color noise, as well as pair it with Sharpen AI to get even more detail out of your photo. If you're interested in trying free trials of Denoise AI or Sharpen AI, head over to topazlabs.com to download them today.